You, finding life rather dull, dreaming again of exotic places, wishing you were somewhere else, we offer you Escape. <laughs> Escape with us now to the Old West and the unusual story of a merciless professional killer as Ernest Haycox tells it in Wild Jack Rhett. Red Mesa. A little town springing out of the hot, dry prairie beside the Chisholm Trail. A saloon, a hotel, two general stores, and a tiny church where the decent citizenry might pray for salvation while a wilder element, trail driver and teamster and buffalo hunter, restlessly searched out friend and enemy along the dusty main street. A small hill rose on the western edge of Red Mesa, plagued with a rash of graves, some marked and cared for, others sinking and forgotten. Man that is born of woman has but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He flieth as it were a shadow. While we're praying, a couple of you boys start throwing some dirt on the sheriff. O oh Lord, with whom do live the spirits of them that be dead, and in whom the souls are dead? And that same evening, a committee of the leading citizens of Red Mesa gathered together at Mayor Wayne's home to decide upon a new sheriff. All right, gentlemen, sit down and let's get this settled. Gentlemen, to make this town a decent place for our women folk and children, we've got to have a sheriff, Todd Mallon, and his kind can't kill. We need the toughest gunfighter available. And I want to propose... Uh, just a minute, Mayor Wayne. Let me speak. All right. Go ahead, boy, Ellen. I don't think we should get all upset just because we lost another sheriff. Jim Speed worked out fine for Red Mesa. All we need is another sheriff just about like him. I expected that, Bo Helen. Huh? All you look out for is to keep that saloon of yours full of anybody who'll buy whiskey and gamble. I still propose we reform this town by sending for a man some of you may have heard of. Jack Rett. Hey, gentlemen, I do want my saloon full. And full of the only men who'll bring any money at all into Red Mesa. Cow punchers coming up the Chisholm Trail with Texas cattle. Thirsty men on the prod from a long drive. But you give them Jack Red instead of a little fun, and this town will go broke. We'll chance that, boy, Helen. We'll chance that. Well, what about Matt Travner? What's he got to say? Mm -hmm. I have nothing to say, gentlemen. As U.S. Deputy Marshal for the district, my job is strictly outside Red Mesa. You run your town any way you like. I'll handle the surrounding territory. Know anything about Jack Red, Travner? Just by reputation, professional town tamer, and I've heard he's the most cold-blooded killer ever drew a gun. Ravner's right. We can't afford a man like that here. Let's put it to a vote, gentlemen. All in favor of sending for Jack Rett, raise their right hand. Five to one. The matter is settled, gentlemen. Good night. Yeah, good night. Good night, Wayne. You'll wait and see Mary, Travener. If you don't mind, Mayor. Of course. Sit down. She'll be out in a minute. Well, poor Helen is pretty mad. But after Jack Red is here for a while, at least there'll be less gunfighting. Be less anyway if Todd Mellon were out of the way. He sets a bad example. He's a hard man to catch. Well, it was all you can, Travner. There's just too much territory around here for Mellon and his gang to lose themselves in. He'll have to be taken by a town officer. And I think Rhett is the man to do it, if Mallon comes to town again. He'll come, Mayor. When the word gets out that Rhett is sheriff here, Mallon will have to face him or lose his reputation with his own men. 
Oh. Good evening, Father. Hello, Matt. Good evening. Hello, darling. Well, Matt Travener, aren't you going to kiss me? Well, of course, sure. <laughs> Here. Mary, what a shameless wench you are. <laughs> oh, Father, you're old-fashioned. After all, we're engaged. Your mother, God rest her soul, didn't behave like that when we were engaged. The war changed things, Father. Uh, I know, but not for the better. <laughs> well, I'm off to bed. Don't stay up too late now. Good night. Good, Good night, night, Father. Sir. You look worried, Matt. Do I? Tell me about it. Well, it's just that they're ascending for a new sheriff. A legal killer named Rhett. He has quite a reputation, and there'll always be men to challenge it. That means more gunfighting. Is that it? I'm afraid so. It's a bloody way to peace, Mary. I know. <laughs> Let's not worry about it now. Come on. I'll pick some coffee for us. Three weeks later, Wild Jack Rhett rode into Red Mesa. He was 38 and at the peak of his reputation. He stood well over six feet, better than 200 pounds of plain sinew. Tawny blonde hair grew long in the frontier style, and his features, fair and tinted like a girl's, were boldly aquiline. He was a picturesque man, till one looked at his eyes, which were large and pale blue, and had the disconcerting trick of remaining too steadily on people. There was to be seen in him the suggestion of inhumanity. Well. He sent word to the committee that he'd meet him at the mayor's office that evening. Hey, it's 8 o'clock now. Where is he? He's in town, and that's bad enough. Be a sport, boy, Helen. We took a fair vote on Rhett. Hey, here he comes now. My name is Jack Rett. I have your offer. I'm Peter Wayne, mayor of Red Mesa. Do you accept it? Depends on what you want. Tell me. Well, Rhett, this is a difficult town. The Chisholm Trail lies just across the river, and we get most of our money from the riders passing through Texas cattle. Now we want them to have a decent time for their money, but we don't like a lot of gunplay and killing. I've always been accustomed to complete authority, Mayor. I presume to know my job, and I won't have interference. That's agreed, Rhett. By the way, the last sheriff had a rule that riders leave their hardware at his office. He had trouble enforcing it. A poor rule. Let them pack their guns. Well, that gives the wild ones a fair chance at you. I never give a man a fair chance at me. Is that all, gentlemen? <laughs> Bo Helen's saloon was the usual deadfall, with a huge bar along one side of the room and gaming tables toward the rear. Next morning, Bo Helen stood tapping the mahogany of the bar with his fingertips, staring thoughtfully at nothing. Good morning, Bo Helen. It's noon, Samus. Huh? Oh, sure. Hey, draw me a beer, Mike. Yeah. Where's the new sheriff, Bo Helen? Over there at the corner table. Came in just before you did. Uh huh. Barkeep, bring me a cigar, a glass of rye. Yeah, now he's going to clean and reload his six guns, one at a time. By golly, he is. How'd you know? It's an old gunman's trick to impress the citizens. But there's no one here except you and me. Then it's to impress me. I don't. I... Uh, well, uh, goodbye, Bo Helen, uh, Mike. <clears throat> You've got something to say to me, Bo Helen? Yes, yes, I have. You're smart, Red. I recognize that. But your record for killing is too severe, and my business depends on an open town. Now, the reform element got you, and I'll go along for now. 
But just remember one thing. I can break you, Rhett, any time. I was waiting for that, Bo Helen. Well, and I guess we understand each other. Hello? Oh, any luck, Matt? Just a morning's ride. Uh, Matt, uh, here's Jack Rhett. Rhett, this is Mac Traven, a U.S. Deputy Marshal for the district. Glad to know you, Rhett. You're young. Don't be misled. Rhett, your job is in town. Mine is everything outside. So I'll either back you up here in Red Mesa or leave you strictly alone. I'll handle Red Mesa. All right. One more thing. I want Todd Mallon. If he comes to town again, he'll have to be taken. Will you do that or shall I? What is he? Outlaw. His main line is plain robbery. Now I want him for killing Jim Speed. Let me handle Mallon. Why? Killing's my trade. Man doesn't live with enough animal instinct to get me. Maybe. Killing you would build a man's reputation considerable. Just so? Well, yeah. good luck, Red. There was peace for a full week in Red Mesa. And then on Saturday night, Matt Travers' prediction came true. Jack Rett was at his customary post just opposite Bo Helen's saloon in a chair on the porch of the Chinook Hotel. Obscured by the shadows and watching the crowd, his cold, pale eyes half concealed by cigar smoke, trouble found him thus. Evening, Sheriff. Good evening, ma'am. Getting an eye on the boys, huh? Oh, shoot! Hello, cowboy. I know. Who's that shot? That's a lot of killing for one sheriff. Three men. I don't like it. Forget it, friend. Have a drink and forget it. You're Bo Helen, ain't you? That's right. Come on now, have one in the house. Now, Mike, fix him up. I can pay for my liquor. Yeah, me too. You never gave him a chance. What kind of sheriff you got stands in a shadow and kills one man and then jumps 50 feet from his gun flash and shoots down two more? Those boys never had a chance at him. Uh, just drink your drink, cowboy. That was the most merciless killing I ever seen. He's a butcher. I wish I'd gunned him. Oh! This is my game. They were fools to play it. Never buck a man who's spent his life learning to kill, son. Get out of town. Get out now. Red? What if I don't... Don't try it, son. Don't let your anger destroy you. Drift. Go on. Drift. Blast your town. I can hold my thirst another 200 miles up the trail. Come on, boys. Yeah. We'll send word back to Texas to go around Red Mesa and let it dry to powder. Yeah, sure will. It won't do, Red. It'll do, Bo Ellen. Barkeep, bring me a glass of rye. On the house. Rhett stood with his back to the bar, holding his drink and a thin black cigar carefully in one hand. He stood there for about ten minutes. Then trouble came again. Todd Mellon, he's riding in with four men. How's the games? Open up the back doors. Well, Jack Rhett, now let's see you shoot down Todd Mellon and four men from the shadows. Good night, Bo Helen.
Escape, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, returns in just a moment. Sorry, but if you think school teachers have it easy, you've got another thing coming. Just ask our Miss Brooks, as played by Eve Arden, on most of these same CBS stations this evening. And now, back to Escape. <laughs> When word came to Bo Helen's saloon that Todd Mallon was riding into Red Mesa with four men, Jack Rett simply walked out, crossed the street to his office, sat down and waited. Twenty minutes later, Todd Mallon had arrived and departed. Not a shot fired. Then Jack Rett went quietly to bed. But early Sunday morning, he was back in his office. Come in. Morning, Rhett. Well, Travner? There's talk, Rhett. I expect that. Now, Rhett, you told me you'd handle Mallon if he came to town. Yes, Travner. Well, they say Mallon rode into town last night with four men. Rode right up to this office, got down, came inside. That you and he stood here with this desk between you talking. And that a few minutes later, Mallon left and rode out of town. I play the game my own way, Travner. And I don't want interference from anybody. People are saying maybe you and Mallon made a deal of some kind. Uh, well, now, somebody's breaking the Sabbath. Know who it could be, Travner? No, I don't. Well, it's a rifle. Sounds like one of those seven-shot Spencers. Well, then it's old Hack Crow. Who's he? An old trapper. Comes to town every few months, sells his furs, gets drunk, goes a little crazy. Jim Speed always laid him away in jail to sober. Yeah, I'll take a look. You better stop him, Red. He's only got two shots left. That'll satisfy him. I doubt if he'll reload. And if he notices us and decides to shoot? Then I'll have to kill him. Hey, hmm? who was that coming out of Bo Helens? You all bay. Gambler. He's a fool. Now he's getting his horse. You gonna stop him, Rhett? No. Oh, let him go. Rhett, the town is your territory, and I won't interfere. But why did you refuse a fair shot at Hack Crow? Ewald Bay is dead. Which is the more useful citizen, Travner? Crow or Bay? The West is full of gamblers. There was considerable talk that day in Red Mesa over Jack Rett's aloof and cruel calm in condoning a shooting that had occurred under his very eyes and within reach of his formidable guns. Then, mid-afternoon, a rider came up from the prairie and reported finding old Hack Crow dead in a coulee, dry gulched and robbed. Mayor Wayne heard about it and went to Bo Helen's saloon to hear more. Ah. Oh, good evening, Mayor. Hello, old boy, Helen. Shot of brandy. And what do you think of your great Jack Rett now, Mayor? Uh, it looks bad. Now, look, Mayor. Everyone knew Hack Crow carried his profits in his pocket. He always did that. So Red allowed him to leave, and Todd Mallon and his men were waiting for him in the coulee. It's as simple as that. We have no proof of that, Bo Helen. No? And why didn't Red take Mallon when he rode in here last night? Because they made a business arrangement, that's why. Well, it doesn't look good, but shh, there's Rhett now. Hmm. Barkeep, glass of rye. I don't want to talk to him yet. I'm leaving. Good night, boy, Helen. Good night, man. Uh, Mike, uh, give me that rye. I'll take it over to the sheriff myself. Uh, here's your drink, Sheriff. Mind if I sit down? Game never changes, Bo Helen. I know what you're going to say. I warned you I could break your ret. It's an old story to me. Every town's got one insider who plays along with the outlaws. I knew you to be that one here when I first saw you. Running a saloon, you'd know when a cattle buyer was riding out of town carrying a specie. 
And when the overland stage was loaded with gold, there was a quarrel over the split of profits between you and Mallet, and you fell apart. That's always the way. Very shrewd, right? It's an old story, Bo Ellen. I know it by heart. Very shrewd. But you can't play the same game. All sheriffs are supposed to be crooked. You and Mallon had an agreeable little chat last night. Did he make you a good offer, Red? Maybe I should accept his offer, Bo Ellen, just to keep you two split. Uh, maybe I should do that. Red, I've seen sheriffs come and go. It's a chancy trade. Sheriffs die. They all die. It's only a question of time. <laughs> You're a hard one, Jack Rat. You might make your peace with Mallon. It'd have to be that way. Otherwise, you'll have little chance of getting rid of me, Bo Helen. It may be that way. I wouldn't be surprised. I always expect the worst of men. And I'm seldom disappointed. It was turning dark as Jack Rett left Bo Helen's saloon. Crossing the street, he walked into his office, but continued on out through the back door. A few minutes later, he stood in the gathering shadows opposite the O.K. stable and watched Bo Helen ride out and drift into the prairie to the south. He knew now what to expect. It would happen soon, perhaps tomorrow. He returned to his office and slept the night there. Come in. Well. Morning. Brett, I want you to meet Mary Wayne. Miss Wayne, very proud. I, I, I wanted to know you. Hmm. To meet him, Mary, not to know him. Brett lives in a closed world. Huh. See that? I have no friends. Oh, we're to be married on Thursday, Mr. Red. I, I should like you to be there. I'd be most happy. Thank you. Now, Mary, would you wait outside? I've got some business to discuss with the sheriff. Of course, Matt. But don't be long. Goodbye, Mr. Red. Bye, Miss Wayne. Brett, this afternoon I'm leaving to find Todd Mallon. You had your chance, but you let him go. Wait, Travener. Wait, wait. I've tried patience, Rhett, and I'm a poor hand at it. Travener, you have a fine girl. If it's not presuming, let me congratulate you and uh, compliment her. Thank you. Was that all? Um, I'll take care of Mallon. Give me a little time. It's my job. Red, I, I want to believe you. No man wearing a star should believe anybody. It's a weakness. Haven't I told you? Blessed if I quite understand you, Red. And understand this. Every man has his time. When it comes, he knows it. There's no turning back. Nothing makes any difference then except to stand up to the finish and go out in decent style. And yet you're the man never believes in giving another man a break. Don't try to understand me. You want help with Mellon? I have no faith in help. Mel? Coming, Mary. Oh, wait, uh, tra Travener. Mm -hmm. I'll suggest this much. Take one man. Ride due north to where the cattle trail crosses Tempest Creek. Be there tonight. Understand? Red, I... I'd hate to oppose you. If you did, you'd lose. I've been 15 years at this, Travner, which is five years beyond average luck. That evening, Jack Red took up his post on the porch of the Chinook Hotel, dressed in his best, a hard white shirt, a blood-red Windsor tie, and a suit of black broadcloth swelling around the big, uncompromising shoulders. He sat there calm behind the smoke of his cigar, waiting. Uh, full moon tonight, Sheriff. That's right. Uh, no offense, mind you. <coughs> Good evening, Red. Hello, Mayor Wayne. Uh, Mayor, have you seen Travner? He rode north this afternoon. Back tomorrow, he said. Good. 
Where's the sheriff? Here I am. Red. Red, listen, I just come up South Creek and Todd Mallon and six men were only a quarter mile behind me, heading into town. All right, friend. Take cover. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Red stood up and moved into the shadow at the end of the hotel porch. Across the street, Bo Helen appeared in the full glow of the doorway of his saloon. I'm out in the dark and meet your prince, Jack Red. What are you afraid of? It's only Malin riding in to see you. Thieves fall out, but the urge for profits brings them together again. You should have known it, Red. Nothing surprises me. Oh, well. Oh, there you are, Red. Surprised to find you exposing your great reputation out there in the middle of the street. Every man has his time. You want to try it, Bo Helen? Or will you wait for help? I'll wait. The arriving horses came up into the moonlit street and halted at the corner of the saloon. Bo Helen's hand lifted toward the group. And at that order, the horsemen spread out until they were flank to flank all across the street. Todd Mallon advanced from the line and stopped, square and alert above the saddle. Jack Rett stood alone in the middle of the street, his eyes flashing a hard fury. Then he dropped his cigar and ground it beneath the boot. It was a final gesture. How are you, Mallon? Goodbye, gentlemen. Next day, Red Mesa buried some more men out on the hill and talked of Jack Red, who was more of a mystery to them now than when living. To all of them but one, Matt Travner. Nobody knows a killer's world, Mary. Wasn't any room in Jack Rett for much pity. But he sent me away to save me from what he knew was coming. I think that was a kindness, although I had no fear. It was a fine thing for him to do, Matt. But they say he stood in the middle of the street to face them all in the moonlight. Why? It wasn't his style. As long as he was sure of himself, he never gave anybody an even chance, Mary. But killers live and die by instinct. And somewhere along the evening, he got the warning. After that, it was just a matter of pride. He killed Malin and Bo Helen before he died, standing up and in good style. And that's sort of a, a greatness, isn't it? Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you Wild Jack Rett by Ernest Haycox, especially adapted for radio by John Meston. Jack Rett was played by John Daner, with Larry Dobkin as Matt and Lou Krugman as Bo Helen. Parley Bear was the narrator. Featured in the cast were Junius Matthews, Russell Simpson, Gene Bates, Paul Dubov, and Sam Edwards. The special music for Escape was composed and conducted by Ivan Dittmar. <laughs> Stay tuned now for Make Believe Town, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. Roy Rowan speaking for CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.